But the Saints Row reboot, or Saints Row 2022, whatever you want to refer to it as, recently releasing and to no one's surprise at being completely shit on by seemingly everybody, I'm a little disappointed in it. I've always been a huge fan of the Saints Row series, and while I'm disappointed, I can't say that I'm entirely surprised. I mean, who really is surprised? I kind of seen this coming a year ago when Volition came out and said that they're going to be leaving behind the tone of the previous games. Yeah, go ahead. Remove the one thing that makes your game uniquely stand out from everything else, and then choose to arrogant ignore your fan base and watch your game succeed. I mean, everything about this game just seemed like it was going to be an absolute train wreck. And then you have that one clip of literal dialogue of this game. Insanity. All in line? What the fuck? You didn't get a bonus. Oh, fuck. Man. What the actual goddamn fuck? Human. You would what never believe. Oh. Uh... goddamn motherfucking goddamn fuck. Yeah. <laughs> crap, crap. It turned off crap, the license crap, music. God, and yeah, you can kind of tell that it's a shell of its former glory, to say the least. I can't even believe that that is actual dialogue. That's something that a Mormon kid that cusses whenever his parents aren't around and finds it hilarious was put in charge of the writing behind this game. But there is some light out of this horrible press, and that is my friends, at one point in time Saints Row was actually a good series, and I decided to recently go back and replay the masterpiece that was Saints Row 2. Now, there's always been an argument as to whether Saints Row 2 or 3 is the best out of the series. I personally started with Saints Row 3, and at the time, I did prefer that game a little more. Just because I was incredibly immature in the idea of being pulled in a cart by a sex slave during a shootout or murdering furries for a game show was just hilarious as fuck to me. And truthfully, it still kind of is. I mean, what game has the audacity to do stuff like that? Saints Row 2, on the other hand, is still a phenomenal game, and an experience I highly recommend. The game still has its moments of humor, both in the story, oh yeah? And I'm curious if you can keep acting like a douchebag when I shove that gavel up your ass. My client would like that stricken from the record. And in the side activities, and they were unique. Probably won't fly that well in today's political climate, but damn was it fun. Like impersonating a police officer to use excessive force to boost a show's TV ratings. Spraying property with literal shit from the sewer to help out a real estate manager. Or cleaning the streets and rival gang operations by exterminating literal crackheads. And of course, we can't forget the amazing revive mechanic, like pouring out a 40 on top of your fallen homies. There would never be another game like this. And it can't just be me thinking, games like this are incredibly nostalgic and look, feel, and for its sense of humor. And what they tried to achieve at the time, it's really almost like a time capsule for their open world genre. During a period where everything was considered a Grand Theft Auto clone, Saints Row 2 still managed to feel uniquely different and separate itself from Rockstar's behemoth. Saints Row 2 released four years after San Andreas, and with Saints Row's story revolving around you playing as your own customized boss with the sole purpose of trying to get the Third Street Saints gang up and running again with each mission and side activity, well, a side activity that involves one of the many rival gangs that you slowly aggravate as you progress through the story. Again, you can draw those similarities on the surface, but they're still uniquely different. And I gotta say, goddamn, did they nail how you feel. Like, everyone in this damn city is against you, and it doesn't feel overwhelming or poorly paced at all. First, you have the Ronin, a Japanese gang that's centered around gambling and porn operations. With this gang, you have Pierce and Gad helping you take them down. Then you have Carlos focusing on the Brotherhood, a gang that's involved in gun running operations. Lastly, you have Shani investigating the Sons of Samdi, a voodoo Haitian gang who's involved in drug trafficking led by the general. Each one of them slowly put the saints on the radar as you start to interrupt their businesses and establish your own foothold in the city of Stillwater. Until finally a big corporation by the name of Ultswar start coming after you as it's revealed, the CEO of which has been using each one of these gangs to his benefit. As you start taking the gangs and their operations down, neighborhoods fall under the saints' control, giving you some kickback and enhancing your abilities in the process, like giving you discounts at stores, improving weapon accuracy, lowering the wanted level by certain enemy factions a little bit faster, or being allowed to recruit more followers on the street. My only one complaint, if I had one, which isn't really a complaint, it's more so pointing out how you progress in the game. Saints Row 2 has a respect meter, and you have to fill it up by doing side activities like beating people down as a cop, spraying things with literal shit, or causing mayhem in order to progress through the story. That's how you unlock more missions. A pain in the ass for someone who's just trying to rush through the story, but a great way to get someone to try out the different stuff going on throughout the game. It's a little bit of a catch-22, as if you don't like something, you're kind of shit out of luck and gotta do it in order to up that respect. 
spec meter, but at the same time, I think it's something devs should do a little bit more. To a point, you know, you want to have stuff that you can do once you've beaten the story, and obviously if you've done all the side activities in order to progress that story, then you feel a little empty at the end of the game. But on the flip side, you also don't want to have people rush through the story, put the game down, and never touch it again. That was ultimately what I was trying to do until I was forced into doing some of the side activities, and I quickly found myself enjoying a lot of it. Just for the outrageous type of stuff that I was doing. You know, it's it's refreshing. I get it. Open world games are kind of hitting a point where they're boring, they're not shaking up the formula, nothing is too different. But over a decade later, Saints Row 2 reignited that interest. It reignited that spark and that love for that open world mayhem that this series came to be known for. And if you play on PC and you're eyeing the Saints Row reboot, personally, if you never played Saints Row 2, I highly recommend giving that game a shot. Or even Saints Row 3 Remastered. Saints Row 2 is a couple bucks. Saints Row 3 Remastered is literally always on sale, so you're not going to be emptying out your pockets for a game that's almost a decade old. Plus, the up graphics is always nice. But let me know what you guys think. Have you guys ever played Saints Row 2? Have you guys bought the Saints Row reboot? If you have, what do you think about it? Do you think people are shitting on it a little too much? What has your position been on the Saints Row series? Let's talk down in the comments section below. But like always, guys, my name is Cynic. Thank you all so much for watching. Special thank you to my patrons. If you're interested in that and want to support the channel a little further, link is down in the pinned comment for early access, behind the scenes, just extra content as well as a direct way to get in contact with me. But until next time, I'll see y'all later.